What's up everyone? So today's video, we're gonna be going ahead and doing another step in the Hell Ram supercharged, pro-charged Ram 1500 build. Um, what we're gonna be doing, um, last video, if you guys checked it out, we finally got the tune loaded, so we are good to go. I went ahead and took the liberty of just redoing the stuff that we did before. So if you guys have been following along, uh, we had some issues with the tune and it getting loaded, whatnot. Um, we had to unload the tune and because the tune had to go back to stock, I had to put the stock injectors and the stop map sensor back in there. And um, yeah, so I just put it all back again. Um, one little tip before I just get into what we're gonna do in today's video is on the actual fuel rail itself, <clears throat> if you guys watched in another video, I kind of uh, made things a little bit easier. You see this? So there's two bolts that hold the fuel rail on on each side. You have a bolt here and a bolt there, or just a screw. And then you see this hose that goes across the top there. Um, what I ended up doing is previously, I kind of left that hose intact and just lifted up the fuel rail and did all, all on there and then disconnected and did the same thing on this side. What I found was a lot easier, way less time consuming instead of breaking your back, being kind of hunched over on all this stuff is I ended up um, removing that and I took the whole fuel rail system right out and then I changed the injectors over there which made things way quicker way simpler and you weren't hunched over trying to change your injectors so I'd recommend that for today's video um, we're gonna be doing the next step and um, what this next step in my eyes is and also for another reason is I'm gonna be changing the uh, the water neck here that goes on the thermostat housing. So I'm gonna be changing that because that's required. And there's a hard pipe that goes in here um, just in case I guess the belt snaps or something like that, but they reroute this stuff. So I'm gonna be going ahead and doing that stuff. <clears throat> and um, another reason why I wanna do it right now is because it's a Saturday morning and um, there's two types of coolant and I just wanna make sure I have the right coolant um, before I go over to the dealership. There's a, a pink kind and there's a purple kind. It's supposed to be purple in mine, but I'm 99% sure that it's the pink style. Uh, coolant so a different type of coolant so I just want to make sure I have the right one before the dealership closes that way I can get this wrapped up today um, and hopefully running so that's the plan let's go ahead and drain the coolant and I'll show you how to do that also just to give myself a little bit more room I'm gonna remove the radiator fan because um, I'm gonna have to get in there and change some of the pulleys so I might as well give myself some room now make it easier for myself to get in there and also to drain the coolant um, the radiator fan <coughs> is held on by two 13 mil bolts right here this is the v6 model fan the e fan electric fan called a bunch of different things um but i've already had it out so to get it out on my truck is gonna be very simple the two bolts take off the electrical plug and it'll pretty much pop straight out this i already have off there's this clip that sits here because i just kind of had to sneak my truck over to the dealership and there's also three speed clips on the bottom that hold the underbelly to the bottom of the radiator fan those are already removed so let's go ahead and get this out so to drain the coolant you're going to pop underneath here and on the driver's side of the vehicle you're going to see this little spout um, I went ahead and just threw, there's a little spigot on the bottom that you can throw a hose on just to keep it, everything clean. Um, I happen to have some quarter inch um, just hose on uh, laying around, but it's a little bit small, but I managed to get it to stretch over. So you might want to go with something a tiny bit bigger, but this will do the job. Again, quarter inch, just vacuum hose or whatnot. And then I'm going to feed it into this bottle here, clear bottle, so I can see what color we got coming out of this thing. And then you're going to see this little kind of plastic nut that's here it does um it does have like a little indent on it which makes it a little bit hard to fit a socket directly over it so it's kind of an oddball size i find that using a 18 millimeter fits on mine but not all the way it's kind of a little bit sloppy but what you're going to do is you're going to just turn it and <clears throat> once you loosen it it'll start to come out uh, so you're going to turn counterclockwise and then the fluid will start to come out of your radiator so there we go you'll see it kind of pop out like so don't force it or do anything crazy but you'll see if i move the camera over here the coolant starting to come out so i'm gonna let this drain and then we'll move on to the next step so this is what i was mentioning as well is with my truck being a 2014 apparently somewhere around 2014 they switched from the pink stuff to the purple stuff so when I went to the dealer, um, the service manager was asking, are you sure it's the pink stuff? 
I think I'm pretty sure it's the pink stuff and not purple, unless I'm colorblind, but I went ahead and bought the pink stuff because um, I don't think it's the end of the world, but you're not supposed to mix the two just because it could kind of gel up or something of that nature. So um, I'm glad I went ahead and got the correct stuff. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and put the same stuff in, even though apparently it calls for the purple. Um, I just, I'm not going to be draining the block completely, so I want to match what's already in it. Also, not a, not a bad idea is to remove your radiator cap just to let air go in the system. So that way we don't uh, have to take forever. You can see it kind of flows a little bit better with uh, with the air because you can hear it trying to suck air through the cap, around the cap, to seal the cap and out of this overflow, but this just kind of expedites the process. So just as a rough idea on how much um, coolant you're going to be taking out, that one, the one gallon jug is pretty much full. I'm going to be replacing it with new stuff, but another one is almost halfway full and it's still going. But while that does that, it should be low enough in the system that I can remove this upper hose. This one should be pretty well empty. I do already have a 180 degree thermostat in there, so we don't have to change that. But if you didn't, I would recommend the 180 thermostat at least. Some people go 160, but I'm going to stick with my 180. Um, and let's go ahead and show you guys what we're going to be doing. So see this little thing here, this uh, 45 degree brass fitting, we're going to have to be installing that. And that is going to go here, if you guys can see that. So we're going to be removing the fitting, the straight fitting there, putting in that 45. And this stock thermostat housing is going to be coming off. Luckily, I do get to keep all this intact, which is going to be a little bit nice and almost probably easier. So I don't have to take off this clamp since I'm just going to leave this hose on here. Reason being is since it was a used kit, the previous owner already cut his hose and when he went back to stock, he just replaced it. So he gave me all his stuff. So um, I'm going to be putting this to there. It's going to go all the way to the top radiator port. This is the billet one that we're going to be tossing on. So this one's going to be going on. And here is that 45 degree fitting that I was mentioning. So let's get this top hose off and we can get cracking. And uh, also we're going to be taking out that. Let's go. So the top or the thermostat housing is held on by 13 mil bolts. So we'll remove those. And then at the top over here, it's just a clamp. So we'll use some um, slide pliers or slip pliers and just take the clamp off. All right, top portion of the hose is off. One other thing that is nice is because I don't have to take out the thermostat, it's closed and any fluid that would be sitting on the other side of that is being trapped in. And because that's 180 and I don't have to swap it out, we're good to go there. <clears throat> Moving over to here, like I said, I usually just use these. I find it's the simplest way to get these off because you can adjust it according to how it is. A little squeeze, kind of rotate like that and it's already wanting to fall off. So wiggle this off and that is it I'm gonna put this on here for now because I finally try to over over uh, clamp themselves and a little bit hard to get your pliers around but I'm gonna leave that like that we'll remove this and move on to the next step next I'm gonna remove the catch can um, it's in the way of where the supercharger is gonna go and I might as well get it out of the way now since I'm in this area and we're gonna have to figure out where to locate it after this because the supercharger is going to Day exactly where this catch can is currently located but we'll figure that out after it's not a huge priority at the moment at least not for me so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and it's also gonna give us a bit more work or room to be able to work in this area where we're at right now because it is pretty tight in here and I got to take out this straight fitting and put in that 45 and it's gonna give me a lot more room also, at the same time, we could probably empty this and see what's caught in it, but I'll save that for another video. We can kind of see what's been caught in it over the last few months of driving. So here's the catch can. I'm going to take all the lines with it just to give me a bit more space, and we'll get it out of here. So with the catch can removed, we can go ahead and remove these clamps on this spigot that we have to replace. So same thing, I like to use these pliers for this purpose. So I find they work best. And I also use them to kind of break the hose free. This thing's been on here for over 100,000 miles, so. 
it's gonna need a little bit of persuasion. And just to make my life easier, I'm gonna take it off of this side, just so the hose is continually trying to whack itself or return to its original position. Same thing. Put that there, break the hose free, like so. Now we should be able to pull it off. Hopefully there's not too much in there. Oh, we're clean. And there we go. Okay guys, I'm just gonna rest this off to the side. And now we need to remove this. All right, so after doing a bunch of nonsense, finally got a Allen key, it's an 11 millimeter, and you guys are gonna find it's a bit of a weird size to find. Everything seems to go up to 10 millimeters and then jump to 12 millimeters. There's an 11 mil Allen key that goes inside of this spout to be able to turn it out, and it is in there. So um, yeah, I ended up finding one. 7 16 is a, a pretty similar size, so this is a 7 16 one I found, and it's working. But let's go ahead and spin that out, and then we can go ahead and put that 45 in. All right, so here's the old spigot, and you can see that 11 millimeter Allen in the middle that is, that thing was in there insanely tight. So, and with 100K on this engine, you can only imagine how, how long it's been in there and, and whatnot. So that's out. Here's the 45 we're gonna be putting in. And so another thing you have to do is get some Teflon tape and a 15 millimeter. So to tighten this, and if you guys, I'm sure you guys have done this, but if not, let's go ahead and just recap. So you're gonna put the Teflon tape on here like so, and the direction you wanna wrap it is so that it doesn't unravel as you tighten it. So you wanna go this direction, whatever way you wanna call this or consider this, but you're gonna put it this way. And I'll show you why in just a second. That's enough. So just go around it a few times. Don't go crazy with it, otherwise you'll have a hell of a time trying to get it in there. But <clears throat> when it ends, it's gonna, the end of it's right here, I think, right? I think you guys saw me wrap it. I can't even find it anymore. But yeah, the end of it finishes this way so that when you tighten it, it doesn't hook and start unpeeling it. So that's that. And then we're gonna put this in here, like so. So we'll get that screwed in and it's going to face back towards this direction once we're all said and done here. So it's going to get tight pretty quick and then we'll start turning it with our 15 millimeter here. Probably going to be a little bit fun to get a wrench in here for sure but We'll make it happen. And it's a bit awkward since it's a 45 trying to find a flat side to turn on, but we'll make do. So we're gonna get this tightened up in position and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so the 45 is installed and tight and you wanna position it towards the engine block. They also give you one of these worm style gear clamps and you're gonna reuse your original hose and you're gonna take off the original clamp. So what you're gonna do here is, um, the hose seems like it's a little loose on there, so I'm hoping we're not gonna have leaking issues. Um, with that supplied 45, it's pretty uh, sloppy, but it's another point and then we'll get this on here. Slide this down and this is supposed to be the way that uh, we're leaving it. Okay, so this is the official orientation of this. Um, it is a little, um, it's almost not to my liking. It is satisfactory as far as the way they do this, but um, I think they could have done a better job as far as planning this out because the it's not kinked, but it's kind of trying to contort that hose in a way that it doesn't want to go. So um, I got it on there. I ended up pushing this hose a little bit further down just to try to uh, reduce this kink that was in it. But that's the way they want it. I'm not, obviously we don't have the supercharger in front of us, so I'm not sure what the purpose of having to push that over 
an extra you know half an inch is but of course they have their reasoning so that's um, supposedly out of the way now I can go ahead and put the thermostat housing on here so I'm gonna go install that you just use this use original 13 mil bolts and then we'll go on Next step is installing this hard pipe onto the water neck. So it's got this little adapter that they give you. And let's get this over the top. This clamp is going to be a bit tight, but I'm going to loosen this clamp. And it's going to be something like that. We'll have to get it positioned exactly, but this one is then going to hook up to here. Like so. And then this one will be on the water neck on the end. So it should end up something like this. So let me get this position, then we'll tighten everything down. There we are. This is how we have it. I don't have my... Um, rad fan in here to be able to put the clip on it but it's going to sit something like this and you're going to see this hard pipe go across and then that aluminum water neck putting things out of the way it looks like they're opening up a bunch of room for obviously supercharger sitting in here so that stuff is done and now we can work i think the next step or next video is going to be the pulleys so we have to get all these pulleys situated they have some steel ones and they want to do some different stuff there but um we're just going to fill this thing up with water or antifreeze eventually but that part is simple the hard stuff as far as not hard but the modification for the coolant system is done at this point Okay, so thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and turn on that bell notification too so that you are notified of all the latest and newest videos. A lot more on the way. Next step is going to be putting on those pulleys and then the last one's gonna be bolting up that actual supercharger head unit. So uh, a lot on the way and then obviously a lot of fun coming once it's actually on there. Um, whatever reviews you guys want, whether it's sound clips, um, drivability, all that stuff is coming. But thanks so much for your support, guys. Um, if you like this video, again, give it a thumbs up for me. And we'll see you on the next video. Take care.